Okay, so um, this, this uh, particular psalm is one that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, when I was, when I was a, a very young man, I was uh, uh, attending camp meeting and, and our dorm uh, uh, leader, do, uh, our, our, our adult uh, in, the, in, the, in the dorm, quoted the first five verses of, of Psalm 103 every night as a part of his prayers and, and it struck me then and it, it has always been uh, 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 a desire of my heart to, to praise God the way the psalmist did here in, in, this, particular, in this particular psalm. So... Uh, Let's, let's read together the first few verses of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We, Wednesday night, uh, I think it was Jack that was uh, started uh, singing that uh, during our prayer time Wednesday night. Uh, so we, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of thine iniquities and heals all of thy diseases, who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies my mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, he says, verse 1. Bless the Lord. And the Lord there, you'll, you'll notice, is all caps. Uh, so that means that that is uh, Yahweh. Uh, and in the Old Testament, Yahweh is, is uh, uh, that attribute of God is referred to as Redeemer God, Savior God. Uh, and uh, He is, isn't He? So... Um, one other thing that I, uh, I almost forgot to do uh, is for the last 15 or 20 years, I've been encouraging my class to read the Bible through each year and uh, was pleased to hear that uh, Pastor Randy is, is uh, behind that as well. And as you read through the Bible, um, we, uh, we come up with some, uh, uh, some answers to questions that we have. And I throw some out each week. And so I have some trivia questions for you. Um, by the way, this is the class participation part. Okay? Uh, who was the first high priest? Melchizedek. Hmm? Melchizedek? No, he was, he was uh, uh, a priest of God, of the Most High God, but he wasn't the, the first high priest that was appointed uh, as a part of the Exodus as they were coming out of uh, Egypt. Aaron, yes, it was Aaron. Okay, Moses' brother, by the way. Uh, then uh, Aaron, uh, also uh, his four sons were uh, made to be priests, but two of them died in a very unusual way. How did how did uh, uh, Nadab and Abihu die? Do you remember? They took meat. That, well, it, it had to do with the altar. They had, they had presented some unauthorized fire. I don't know what that meant. Uh, but uh, anyway, the fire of the Lord came out and, and destroyed them. It was just a very bizarre uh, kind of event. But God was trying to teach us that uh, there are right ways and wrong ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. Now, in the New Testament, when Jesus made his triumphal entry into, into Jerusalem, on that uh, Palm Sunday, or what we call Palm Sunday, what was the first thing he did when he got into the temple? Oh, the yeah, he drove out the money changers and the merchants uh, uh, out of the, the house of God. So uh, that was uh, uh, that was that was very upsetting to the local religious leaders. Uh, uh, Jesus said, "Follow me." And I'll make you fishers of men. Did you tell somebody about Jesus this week? Did I say something? Yes, go ahead, Bob. 
Remember Jesus, they told him, go get the donkey upon which no man had ever rode. Mm -hmm. And he got on it and rode it like a parade. Mm -hmm. That was a miracle. Oh, it was. It was. It was. Wildest thing in the barnyard of a donkey that never has been ridden. You ever been around a donkey? <laughs> we came home one day and there was one in, in the front yard. Uh, yeah, Jack. Uh, and uh, big, big, big donkey. And uh, uh, Jack was uh, enjoying himself rolling around in the yard there and his freedom that he had just acquired. Uh, <laughs> But they are strong animals. Mm -hmm. They really are. Used to work. And, um, so, anyway, uh, let's uh, let's let's remember to tell somebody about Jesus this week. Okay. All right. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my soul. What is your soul? Mind, will, and emotions. Mind, will, and emotions. Yeah. Um, Someone once said that we are not a body that just happens to have a soul. Yeah. We are a soul that just happens to have a body. Yeah. This one temporarily. Yeah. Okay? And if you think about an egg, uh, and you, you, you think about the God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He made us in his image, so we are triune as well, body, soul, and spirit. So uh, with an egg, if you look at an egg, the shell is what could be representative of our body. And uh, you know what happens to, sh to the shell when you make an egg useful? <laughs> it's, broken. It, it's broken and you throw it away, yeah. right? Uh, with one exception, uh, the membrane inside the egg, the trivia, no additional charge for this. Uh, <laughs> my grandmother, had chickens, I mean, a house, chicken house full of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day, we cousins were all playing there at the house, and, and, and one of the girls got a nasty cut on her face. My grandmother proceeded to reach and grab an egg and pull out that little membrane uh, against the shell mm -hmm. and use it as a, it, it, to close that wound until we could get to the doctor to get it stitched up. Uh, that amazing stuff, amazing stuff. But anyway, if we think about the egg, uh, the yolk being the central part of the egg, that might represent our soul, okay? Um, and then there's, a, there's a, a, a very tiny membrane around the yolk that holds it together. We might uh, 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 take that to be our spirit, okay? Uh, but it is our soul, who we are, the essence of who we are, that's going to live forever uh, in a spirit form, okay? Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Now, we're, we're good so far, right? We can all bless the Lord with, every, with, with our, the essence of who we are. And then he goes on to get us in trouble. He says... Uh, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Uh, well, all, you mean even those tendencies that I have that are ungodly. Oh, don't look at me this that way. You, you got them too. You got them too. Uh, but, but here the psalmist is saying that even in our imperfection, when we praise God, he takes it and turns it into something beautiful. You know that we don't even know how to pray as we ought to, but the Holy Spirit translates those prayers into what uh, uh, God will receive and then act on. Um, so... Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. And he lists some benefits here that follow. Now, let's stop for a moment and remember that this was not written in English. This is, this is poetry, this is, but it's Hebrew poetry. It is not English prose. 
And there's a difference, a huge difference, because Hebrew poetry uh, was not written to rhyme. It was written to convey concepts. And uh, uh, in Hebrew poetry, uh, line A doesn't necessarily rhyme with line B, but it is line B is a restatement of line A in many cases. That's called parallelism. And here, there's a lot of confusion about this uh, second benefit of the Lord. The first one is that he forgives all of our iniquities. How many of you are glad that God forgives all of our iniquities? Yeah, yeah, me too. Oh, me too. Uh, and then he says, and he heals all of our diseases. Now, <coughs> remember Hebrew parallelism. If he's forgiving our sins and healing our, our, our sicknesses, the sickness referred to here is the sin sickness that plagues us. Uh, first, he forgives our iniquities and he heals our diseases. Well, if you go to Isaiah chapter 1, and I, uh, I'm going to look over there real quick. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1, get my notes out here so I can follow them. Uh, and we look at uh, uh, verses 4 through 6. Isaiah is lamenting the condition of Israel in its open, blatant rebellion against God. He says, ah, sinful nature, or sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, <clears throat> children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Uh, why should you be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole head is sick. He's, he's talking about the, uh, uh, the national corporate sin of Israel, and he likens it to a sickness, uh, sin sickness. We've heard some of the old-time preachers call it that uh, down through the years. But uh, so God forgives and God heals us from our iniquities, our sin, sickness. You can have peace here and now. You can have spiritual wholeness here and now. And that's what the psalmist is saying. I'm blessing the Lord because he does that for us. He makes us whole. He, he uh, uh, forgives our sin. And he remembers that we are but dust. If you read a little further over in this chapter, you'll see that. Uh, but he forgives our iniquities, heals our diseases. Verse 4, uh, continuing the theme, he redeems my life, your life, thy life, from destruction. He has redeemed us. We are a redeemed people. Therefore, we will never face ultimate destruction. Yeah. We won't face judgment for our sins. Amen. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, so, so glad. And then he says, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. God doesn't forgive us because we're worthy. God doesn't forgive us because we're good people. God doesn't forgive us because we, uh, uh, we're trying. God forgives us because of his loving kindness and his tender mercies. That's why he forgives us. Uh, and have you ever struggled with the idea that maybe God didn't forgive you for something? Uh, does the enemy ever come and whisper in your ear, oh, a real Christian wouldn't do that. 
How can God forgive you? You've done that before and you've asked him to forgive you and you've told him you wouldn't do it again. How can you be? Well, the word says that he forgives all of our iniquities. All of them. Um, the, we, we've got Easter coming up and um, I'm going to uh, do a series on the seven sayings of Christ from the cross um, and then the last Sunday will be Easter Sunday and that one will be on the resurrection. I don't want to leave him on the cross, you know. So, uh, uh, But the what happened that day on the cross blows my mind. One man, human and yet God, took all of my sins all of the sins of everybody that would ever be redeemed, that would ever be saved, he took all of the punishment, the wrath of God on himself that day. And it took God himself to withstand that. Uh, but that's what he suffered that day on the cross. Uh, now, he didn't take on him the sins of those that would never repent. That's... That's mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. He didn't take the sins of those that would never repent on him because they are going to have to pay for that sin. They are going to experience the wrath of God because of their sin. But for those of us who have been redeemed, he took it all. Oh, past, present, and future. He paid the penalty for all of that. Uh, and we can be free. And uh, uh, Isaiah uh, uh, says that uh, uh, all, though our sins be as scarlet, he'll cleanse them and make us white as snow. Uh, have you ever spilt beet juice or or uh, grape juice on a light-colored carpet. Uh, what do you know about that? Hmm? Can't get it out. It's still there. Yeah, it's still, it's still there. Yeah, and, and this was written in a time when there was no Clorox. <laughs> yeah, this was a miracle of God that's described by Isaiah, making our sins which were scarlet as white as wool. Uh, he does it. Yeah, please do. The thief on the cross that said, Remember me. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was shown for a reason. Yes. All yes. he did was believe in Jesus. Yeah. yeah. He didn't get baptized. Nope. He didn't go do a bunch of good works. Nope. He didn't do he didn't he do worked, good he works and he didn't get baptized. He believed. He believed. Yeah. Faith alone. In Christ alone. For, for yeah, yeah, uh, and it is. He he stands as a great example to this day. He sure does. Uh, again, let's go back to that concept of having those feelings from time to time that uh, uh, we think maybe God hasn't forgiven us. Or he couldn't or wouldn't forgive us uh, when the Bible says that he has. Okay, um, and and if we read on in in Psalm one hundred three, uh, and we pick up in <clears throat> verse six, the Lord ex executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. You know, mercy means we don't get what we deserve, right? Grace means we do get what we don't deserve. <laughs> okay, the good, all right? Uh, he is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Another place he says his mercies are new every morning. Uh, he'll not always uh, chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He's not dealt with us 
after our sins. Amen goes right there. He's not dealt with us according to our sins. Oh, oh, I for one am so glad for that. Nor has he rewarded us according to our iniquities. Mm -hmm. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Now, here's, here's my favorite part, verse 12. Uh, I, I, you put a star beside it, underline it, highlight it. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. You've heard it before. If you walk north, you'll go to the North Pole, and if you keep going, you'll, you'll head south. So there's a, there's a definitive point where north stops and south begins. But east and west, you can go east forever and ever and ever. As far as the east is from the west, um, he has hidden our sins. And, and it takes uh, the God of the Bible to do that. Uh, what is God like? Well, in Exodus, um, uh, Moses was communicating, the Holy Spirit through Moses was telling us about who God is in, in chapter 34, verses 6 and 7. Uh, when Moses said, show me yourself, show me your glory. And God put him in the little cleft of the rock and he came by and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious. That's who he is. Long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. I'm glad I'm not God and I'm glad you're not God because our patience wouldn't allow us to be long-suffering like he is toward us. Uh, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and will by no means clear the guilty. Now, we've all been... Uh, uh, cleared by Christ, but that's the only way. Those that are guilty outside of Christ are never going to be cleared until they come to Christ. Okay? Uh, but that's who he is. Uh, and God, God does not hold our sins against us. And this is a concept that is hard for us to understand because we're finite. He's infinite. What God forgives he forgets. Now, don't you wish we could do that? When we forgive, could we just forget? Um, and that may be beyond the scope of, of what, we, uh, what we're capable of. But God, when he forgives, he forgets. Uh, if the devil's ever after you over something, uh, read him from the book, okay? Um, Isaiah, and, and that's why you got to know your book. You got to know your Bible because the enemy is going to come and he's going to come and he's going to come and he's going to come over and over again and we've got to know our Bible. Uh, for instance, in Isaiah chapter 38, verse 17 the last half of the verse says, For thou hast cast all of my sins behind thy back. Out of sight, out of mind. Okay? He's cast all of our sins behind his back. And then we move on over to uh, chapter 43 um, and verse 25 where it says that uh, I, even I, this is God speaking. Am he that blots out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember your sins? You ever had the time when you grieve over a sin and you ask God to forgive you and then it comes to mind later and you, God forgive me, and it comes up again later in your mind and you say, God forgive He's already forgotten it. We don't need to remind him. He's forgiven it. He's forgotten it. 
Okay? Um, and then uh, a little uh, 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 over on the next page, actually, in mine, uh, uh, in, in Isaiah 44, verse 22, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. When this was written, it was ink on papyrus in a scroll. And there was no way to erase the ink off of the papyrus uh, because it was absorbed into that uh, matter. But God is saying, your sins I have blotted out. They're gone. They are gone. Uh, and then there's, there's, uh, there's one more. Uh, Micah chapter 7, verse 19. Uh, I'll set this one up. There was uh, uh, a family that had taken Grandma into, into the home with them. And uh, they loved Grandma, but Grandma was, a, was kind of a fanatic in their eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. And that every time she would open the Bible there on, in the living room on the coffee table, she'd get, to get, get excited and get to shout. And so they uh, had some friends coming over, and they didn't want Grandma to get too excited, so they put a copy of, of uh, Encyclopedia Britannica uh, <laughs> on, the, on the table instead. And uh, uh, while they were visiting with their friends, Grandma got to looking through the encyclopedia and got to shout, <laughs> praise God. She said, and they said, Grandma, how can you get excited about the Britannica? She said, well, I just read that there are places in the sea that are miles deep. And the Bible says... That's where God has put my sins. Here it is, verse, verse 19 of Micah chapter 7, uh, where it says, He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. I had a country preacher add to that and he says yeah he put all our sins in the depths of the sea and then he posted a no fishing sign <laughs> don't be dragging those things up again God's forgotten them God has forgotten <clears throat> don't you wish that as Christians as people of the book as people of faith that we wouldn't do stupid things that we wouldn't do things that we know we shouldn't do and get mud on us. Uh, and, and we do. I do. Uh, and, and you do. Uh, we all do. But God is a God who forgives. And he's got this super wash all set up to clean us up after we do that. And it's in 1 John 1, 9. Where it says, if we repent of our sins... He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. It's in the book. Yeah. It says he'll do it. It doesn't matter if the mud's caked on. If we confess, he'll forgive. Our job is what part of that? Confess. confess. Okay, that's our job. What's his job? If you confess, he'll forgive. That's his job. And he's always faithful. He always keeps his promises. And that's one of the great promises uh, uh, of the Bible. And the reason we must ask forgiveness of our sins, confess those sins, is that sin, until it's confessed, breaks distorts and damages our fellowship with God. Yeah. Yeah. The most important relationship any human being can have on this planet is with their Redeemer. Yeah. And unconfessed sin distorts, damages, and 
breaks our fellowship with him. So we've got to claim the promises mm -hmm. of God that he will forgive when we confess so that we can be clean and we can enjoy our walk. Um, preacher coming to a town he didn't, he didn't know anything about one time, met a, uh, a fellow as he was getting close to the town, and he, uh, he asked him, he said, do the folks in this town enjoy their religion? And he said, the ones that have real religion do. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, so we've got to keep fresh. We've got to keep prayed up, in tune. There's no telling what God could do with us if we were walking in close fellowship with him. We pray for revival all the time. We need to pray. Lord, start it in me. Start it in me. Okay? Uh, thank you for this privilege of being here and, and, and sharing this word from Psalm 103. I count it as a high honor and a privilege. Thank you, Doug, for inviting me. And I uh, uh, hope we can do this again someday. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this, for this time with your people and in your house. Lord, we don't take it for granted, especially in light of the last few years and, and in light of what we see going on in other countries around the world. We are privileged and grateful, and we know it that we're privileged. Now, we pray that you would help us take this word, clean up our fellowship with you, yeah. enjoy our walk, and be drawn so close to you that others see Jesus in us and